Alrighty, looks like it's about that time again here this morning. It's great to see everybody out here with us and uh, glad to have Mark and Debbie back with us. Of course, Debbie's going to be bringing the message for you this morning. Uh, sounds like we've got some energy in the crowd, so that's always a plus. Uh, things are looking a little vibrant here this morning, so we appreciate that. We know today is our youth service day. Uh, we know with things going on, it's going to be a little different, but they've done what they can to help you know, give them a back-to-school uh, blessing and have something fun for them today here after service. So we appreciate Andrew and Jason and all their help doing that. All right, of course, uh, we've got some great things in store for you. Like I mentioned, Debbie will be bringing the message for you, and there's a lot of a lot of teens up here and young ones that's going to be singing for you here this morning, so we know how that is. Even when you're older, you got nerves. So we'll, just, uh, we'll lead out here this morning for all these outspoken requests and for this service and for these young ones up here. appreciates all the hand clapping because he's usually <clears throat> when he's sitting in the crowd he's the one that's hands up in the air and clapping for everybody else so it's always good to look out there and, and see him because he's always minding the Lord somehow so we appreciate you buddy <clears throat> uh, JC if he's if he's ready you're ready to roll let me say this real quick uh, of course if you've seen all the stuff on the table so I don't forget announcing this Angie will have a fit 
She's already probably ner nervous, but I guess you got stuff as the tables as you go out, give and go for you kids. It looks like the tables are, are marked by grade, uh, so don't be afraid to, I'm sure there'll be people passing out or helping there, so grab something and go. And also the collar run today or walk, uh, I guess it's starting here at the church and going up beach for, I guess there'll be different stations there. We're going to make it interesting for them, uh, but it uh, looks like anybody's, anybody's able to do it, right, so... You might get wet, or you might get pain, or food coloring, but I think they've got some t-shirts back here, extras. So uh, feel free to join in here, and, and just, we'll just have a great day here today, all right? Shame is a robber and he's come to 
take my name Oh, love is my redeemer And love is a trumpet sound Love is my power When my freedom song is found There ain't no grave Gonna hold my body down There ain't no grave Gonna hold my body down When I hear that trumpet sound the ground there ain't no grave gonna hold my body down A smooth and velvet tongue Fear is a tyrant He's always telling me to run Oh, love is a resurrection And love is a trumpet sound Love is my weapon I'm gonna take my giants down There ain't no A war between death and life And there on a tree The Lamb of God was crucified And he went on down to hell He took back every key He rose up as a lion And he set all the captives free There ain't no Walk out of the grave I'm walking to 
If you walk out of the grave, I'm walking too. If you walk out of the grave, I'm walking too. If you walk out of the grave, I'm walking too. If you walk out of the grave, I'm walking too. If you walk out of the grave, I'm walking too. If you walk out of the grave, I'm walking too. If you walked out of the grave, I'm walking too. If you walked out of the grave, I'm walking too.
great singing here this morning. Amen. Debbie's, we'll just uh, get behind Debbie, she makes her way up here this morning. And I'll just uh, tickle the desk back here. If that doesn't fire you up, there's probably not much hope for you this morning. Uh, them kids just done an gr- amazing job from beginning to end. And uh, yeah, give them a big hand here this morning. I tell you what, even through that singing with the young kids, the Lord still showed up. He's faithful. I think he's, uh, he's here with a lot of energy this morning, and I think he's wanting to make something happen, either for you, for the church. I think uh, somebody, if you need to pray, today would be a great, a great morning to do so, and uh, we just appreciate the Lord always being faithful for us, and uh, we're also appreciative of Debbie being here with us again, and we can't wait to hear her. So get behind her this morning. If I get too loud, please turn me down back there. I don't want to don't want to cause you to have a headache. Now, I did get the one call last night about wearing school collars, and I'm in Northwest Territory. I realized that, and I did not on purpose wear green and black. But I do have two grandchildren, well, one right now, Haley's graduated from Western, and I wear Western Indian mask because it fits better than any mask I've got and keeps my glasses from steaming. So I want to explain myself and not get attacked by you uh, Mohawks here this morning, but it is good to be here today. What a beautiful crowd uh, there is here this morning, just absolutely beautiful. Some people I don't know, you probably don't know me. I'm just a wild woman when the spirit comes, so don't get scared, but I love the Lord, and when Jason asked me to come back this this morning to preach for back to school, uh, you know, my immediate thought was, oh, I am not a fit for for this service at all, and uh, my mind went to an educator or a younger person to bring this message today, somebody that maybe could identify a little bit more. But at the same time, I didn't hesitate uh, because we belittle our God. We belittle our God if we don't think that whatever he asks us to do, that he will make a way for us to do it. So this morning, God has given us something. I asked Tyson to bring four chairs, which we will use here in a minute. But before we start, I know it's already been mentioned, this is going to be quite a challenging year for all the school staff and all of the students as they go back. But uh, I could not help but get tickled at this joke, and I wanted to share it with you this morning. Said a mom went in one morning to waken up her son and told him to get up and get ready for school. And he says, but why, Mom? I do not want to go. She said, give me two reasons why you should not go to school. He said, well, the first reason is all the kids hate me. And the second reason is all of the students hate me, or all the teachers hate me. And uh, she said, well, those are not good reasons. Now get yourself up and get ready for school. The son says to her, give me two reasons why I should go to school. And she said, number one, you're 47 years old. And number two, you're the principal, so you need to go to school. So you may feel like that, I don't know, uh, this year. You may not want to go, but uh, it'll it'll be okay. You just get out and go. This morning, uh, my scripture is in the second chapter of St. Mark, and I'm not going to read the the scripture, and I'm going to go through and tell you the story. And I want you to hold on. The first part of this is going to be a little boring, perhaps. But I will get to the part that deals with back to school and hopefully some encouragement for you kids and for the rest of you that's involved in school. But I want to tell the story uh, from Chapter 2 of St. Mark. And uh, this was, uh, is, is kind of odd. This was the week of using ropes in the messages. I got to listen to Sister Burnett's message from Wednesday night, wonderful message. If you didn't, wasn't here and didn't hear it, go to YouTube and pull it up. You need to live under the blessing. I tell you what, you need the blessings of God on your life. But she used rope. 
I'm using rope here in a minute, a totally different idea. But the title of the message this morning is Holding the Rope, is Holding the Rope. And from Mark chapter 2, uh, first of all, let's go back to Mark chapter 1. It's the early stages of Jesus' ministry. He's in the regions of Galilee. It's the early part because he calls uh, some of his first disciples, and we know he called his disciples in the early part of his ministry. So he calls Andrew, he calls his brother Simon Peter, he calls James and John. And the Bible said they left their nets, they left their fish, James and John left their father Zebedee, and they went to follow Jesus and become his disciples. He went from Galilee into Capernaum. He went into the house of Simon Peter and healed Peter's mother-in-law, who was very sick. He healed all kinds of diseases as he ministered there in Capernaum. Then he went back to the regions of Galilee. There he taught in the synagogues. There he preached. There he healed all manner of diseases. And by this time, his fame was beginning to spread throughout the land. Then in chapter 2, we find he's back in Capernaum again. He enters into a house, and there are so many people uh, in the house. They've all heard that he's in this particular house. We'll find out a little bit more about this house later. But he's in this house. They find out he's there, and they come and they crowd in the house so much so that it's filled to capacity. You can't even get through the front door because it is so crowded. All of a sudden, as Jesus is teaching the people, there is a disturbance up on the roof of this house. All of a sudden, a hole appears in the roof. Now, I'm telling you a true story, people, out of the Word of God. A hole appears in the room, and down on a mat... Comes, for, uh, comes a man who is paralyzed, who is uh, carried by four men as they let him down into the presence of Jesus that he might be healed of his paralysis. Of course, Jesus' critics was there, and, but Jesus looked at this man and Jesus saw, first of all, the greatest need that this man had. And the greatest need was that his legs not be restored, but the greatest need was that his sins be forgiven. And folks, I'm here to tell you this morning, that's the greatest need in every one of our lives today, that our sins be forgiven. And because of it, it's the greatest blessing that you'll ever have in your life is to know the peace and the forgiveness of sins. So Jesus forgave the man his sins, first of all. The critics immediately begin to think within themselves, this man is a blasphemer because nobody can forgive sin but God alone. Now, if, if we are forgiven of our sin, at that moment in time, there is no outward proof that we have been forgiven of sin. Am I right? As a Christian begins to live their life, things are going to change and you're going to begin to see the results of someone being forgiven of sins. But at that moment, they did not see that proof. But Jesus looked at his critics and he said that ye might know that I have power to forgive sin, I say to the man, rise up, take up your bed and walk. This was the son of God who had all power to heal and to forgive sin. And he proved it that day to his skeptics who were there. They were always there. And you know, we still got them today. Isn't it sad? Isn't it unfortunate? that people do not believe in Jesus Christ. And instead of accepting him, they're rejecting him and putting him down. But that's where we're at. That's where we're at today. We're living in that kind of a, kind of a world. You might say, Debbie, I know that story. I've heard that story. What's that got to do with all of us? Just hold on in a minute. Hopefully we'll find out. I just get to the point where I hopefully can give you some encouragement. But first of all, I want us to look at the scripture. Now, I am not taking away or adding to the word of God. I'm assuming 
So please understand, I'm assuming, G, P, uh, Brother Dad Boys told us we could read between the lines. And a lot of things are left out, but uh, there's a lot of things that just make sense that we can assume is right or is not right. So first of all, let's look at the things that we do not know about this story. Some things that we do not know. First of all, we don't know how these four men carrying this man sick of the palsy, how they heard about Jesus. Scripture doesn't say. We know his fame spread, and perhaps that's how they heard. Maybe they heard about Peter's mother-in-law. Maybe they heard about the unclean spirit in chapter 1 who was healed. I don't know. But somehow they had heard and knew about Jesus. Number two, we don't know whose house they were in. Now, I did some research on this. And there was one commentator said he thought it was the house that belonged to Jesus. Now, hold on a minute. I had to disagree with that guy. He's just a guy like us with an opinion and some research. And I lean upon these people of more intelligence and more knowledge than me. But I also know the scripture says, the, Jesus said this statement, the birds have nests and the foxes have holes, but I have nowhere to lay my head. So it's assumed that this is the house of Peter. And by looking back and running research on these houses, archaeologists have dug up houses from that time. And they said the average house of that day was only two rooms and could hold only about 50 people. And the roofs of these rooms were fixed with beams that went from one wall to the other wall. And in beside the beams, there was mud and thatch that was pressed down in, making a very hard surface on the roof. It was flat. People went up there and they walked on top of the roof. People went up there on hot nights and they slept on top of the, on top of the roof. They didn't have a she shed and they didn't have a man's cave. So they would go to the top of the roof to relax and to have some peace and quiet. And, and because of what the roof was made out of, it was not all that complicated to tear a hole in it. You getting the story? Now, we don't know if they had tools. We don't know anything about it. We just know they made a hole, right? We don't know anything about these four men. We don't know if they knew this man who was sick of the palsy. We don't know if he was a relative of one of them. We don't know if he was a friend of one of them. We don't know if he was just a stranger that they passed by as they walked up and down the street. We don't know, do we? Things that we do not know about this scripture. But now let's look at some things we do know about these scripture, about these men. Again, it's not in written form, but we can assume it. And I believe I'm right on this. These four men had to have love for other people. Now that just makes sense, doesn't it? Whether he was a family member, whether he was a friend, or whether he was a stranger, these men had love for mankind. Boy, do we need love right now in this day in which we live. Our land is full of hatred. Our people are fighting on the streets. The very foundation of a blessed United States of America is being undermined in this morning, but the love of Jesus Christ can fill our hearts and give us what we need this morning they had love they had love I'm, I'm convinced of that also I think we can know this for a fact they were concerned they cared they had compassion you know what compassion means it means to suffer with you know what I think maybe Mary one one of their mind they said you know what what would I want if that was me laying on that mat? What would I want somebody to do if that was me putting themselves in that man's place? And because of that compassion, it got them on their feet and got this man to Jesus. Also, these four men were willing to stop whatever they were doing and get this man to Jesus. Stop whatever they were doing. Have you ever had to stop what you were doing and run an errand for the Lord? Try it. You'll get a great blessing from it. Number four, these men put forth a great effort. We might say they went above and beyond. 
God bless people who go above and beyond. And we know people like that. And every once in a while, somebody will come to mine and Mark's mine. And an individual's name will pop up. And I'll, we'll look at each other and say, you know, they're a dear friend. They would do anything in the world for us. They would stop whatever they're doing and come and help us in our time of need. It's good to go above and beyond. Also, these four men gave support. And they offered strength to somebody who did not have the strength on his own. Sometimes we have to lift up somebody, don't we, who's unable to make it. I'm hurrying through these. But most of all, and the greatest of all, these four men had faith. They had faith. Regardless of how they had heard about Jesus, they had faith to believe and they put legs on their faith and they brought this man to Jesus because they believed without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ could heal him. So they had unbelievable faith. All right. I need four people in these chairs. Two of them, I, I'm, I'm going to uh, draft you. The other two, I'm going to let you be volunteers. If you don't hurry, I'll draft somebody in that place. First of all is our pastor, Brother Tom. You're to fill one of these chairs. The second chair is to be filled by our youth leader, Jason Brown. There he is. And here comes Monty White. He is going to represent a parent with a child in school. Or a grand, he's going to represent the family, the grandparents and the family of children that have children in school. And number four, I need a school teacher. I know we got gobs of them. Gobs of school teachers. Somebody come, school teacher. Andrea, come on, honey. Come on, come and, be a, come and be our representative for school teacher. All right, you can take a seat, boys. Freddie's Freddy's the, the, he's the hollower. He's going to help us out here. He's going to support us this morning. I didn't make myself clear on the volunteers I needed, but that's okay. Sit down here, teacher. Four nice-looking people, right? All right, now, Jesus told the man, take up your bed and walk. Now, it was not a regular bed. Mark and I had the privilege on one of our trips to Israel to go into a house and, and look at the house inside. And over in the wall of the house, was little carved out spaces. And in those spaces was rolled up mats. That was the bed. The mat was nothing more than just, I, I, if you could take a mat like uh, gymnastics, like you have in gymnastics, it was about that thick. It wasn't made out of that good material. It was made out of cloth, just any cloth they could find, skins of animals, whatever, and they made a mat large enough for their body. When nighttime comes, the family goes over to their individual space, they pull out their mat, and they lay it down on the floor, and that's where they sleep. Now, kids, you don't have it that rough. None of us have it that rough. When morning came, they got up, they rolled up the mat, they put it back in the space in the wall. I... We have no idea exactly what the mat looked like. We just, we have, I mean, we have an idea what it looked like, but we don't know for a fact, okay? We don't know for a fact how the men, how the four people grabbed a hold of each corner to carry that mat and get that man to Jesus. But each person had a corner. Am I right? Each person, there's four corners to that mat, and each person had a corner, and the Bible says there was four men. I googled what this mat in Mark chapter 2, it's exactly what I put in, in my Google. I said, I want to see what a mat looks like from Mark chapter 2. And Mary, I got two pictures came up and it just thrilled me to death because it went along with the thought that I had. The two pictures that came up had a rope attached to each four corners of that mat. 
So I went to the family dollar store and I found me a rope and I cut up four pieces. So Andrea, take a piece, pass it on down. We've got four representations of four different things up here this morning, don't we? These people, and they're representing all of you out there. But first of all, as we look at them and look at all of you, we see the characteristics of the four men from Mark chapter 2. For you kids. We see a teacher here. Now kids, I want to tell you something. All of your teachers love you. You may not think they do when they get on your case, but they love you. And they're going to have a tough year this year. I think my daughter's already spazzing out, just trying to get things organized and set up for this COVID year of school that these kids are going to have. They're going to have a tough year, so give them a break. They love you. They are there to support you. They are there. They feel your pain. They have compassion for you. They want to help you. And believe it or not, they're going to be there for you, pushing you, supporting you, and loving you, and pushing you along to get the best education that you possibly can. Thanks a lot for our teachers this morning. Jason is representing the youth department of this church. Young people, if you do not know by now, and parents, I'm going to include you in here. The parents of these young people, if you don't know by now that the youth, uh, pre the youth leader and the youth department of this church cares about your kids and you ain't had your eyes open is all I got to say. Because they care for your kids. They care for your kids. I've seen pictures on Facebook. I've seen where they've opened up their homes. I've seen where they have let you kids invade their homes and have manicures and pedicures and makeovers and cook in the kitchen and wrestle around and who knows how many pieces of furniture they nicked in the process of these boys wrestling around. Why have they done it? Because they love you and they want to support you and they want to help you make the very best in your life that you can. That's why they do it. Then Monty's up here representing our parents this morning. Kids, there's nobody, there's nobody that loves you any more than your parents do, than your grandparents do, than your family does. And I don't mean to be mean when I make this next statement. And I don't mean to offend you or hurt you. But parents, grandparents, that are under the sound of my voice today. If you can't pray for your kids, you need to get in a place with God where you can pray for your kids. This year that we are facing, our kids are gonna need more prayer than they have ever needed in their life. And we need to get down on our prayer boats, get a hold of the horns of the altar, and seek God's face for our kids in our prayer that God will be with them every step of the way. He'll protect them. I have four to pray for. And that don't mean I'm not going to pray for yours, but if everybody would just take it upon themselves, their own responsibility, Carla, that they have, it's going to keep them busy enough. So get to that place where you can pray for your kids representing our family, and then the good pastor down here at the end. Folks, I want to tell you something. This, the pastor, this pastor's no different. I can look back to when I was just a little girl. When I was just a little girl, even smaller than these kids singing, and boy, they did beautiful singing this morning, all of them. But just as a little girl, they would push us up on the platform we would sing our songs, this little light of mine, Jesus loves me and all of that. And they would let the boys stand with their guitars, whether they was in key or not. We always have had a church that have pushed out and supported our kids. And it's no difference today with this pastor and the church board that you have right now. I can say this morning with all of my heart, there's not a church in the country that loves and supports their young 
people any more than this church right here. There might be churches that will equal, but there's none that will surpass the love and the support that this church has had. I have been in board meetings. For you that don't know me, I served as one of the pastors for 27 years. And I have been in board meetings when the youth leaders have said, we need this or we would like to have that. And without a grumble, without a complaint, from the oldest deacon down to the youngest trustee, they all said, give them what they need. Give them what they need. They love your kids this morning. They love your kids, and they're supporting your kids. One of the main reasons, not the, there's many reasons, many purposes that this building serves, but one of the main reasons was you, the youth was in mine. The youth was in mine. They've all got a rope. They're all holding up. They're all holding you up. They're all supporting you. They're all loving you. They're bringing you to Jesus. And there's no greater one in all of this world that we could take you kids to this morning than Jesus Christ. Let me finish with this little illustration. There was a, there was a little boy, small for his age. The class that he was in, all the other kids was much, much bigger, much, much taller. And... Because of that, he was overlooked a lot by the other kids. He was not really abused or bullied, but he just wasn't included in things that the other kids did. He was just kind of pushed off to the side. They really just didn't notice him. Just a little kid stayed to himself. And his, it did seem to bother him, but it broke his mother's heart. And as they would come out of school, she would notice all of the other kids, you know, all ganged up together, laughing and talking. And here's her little boy walking behind, coming to get in the car with his mommy. And she said he never complained, but she said it broke my heart because he wasn't included. She said Valentine's Day was approaching. And she said that he came to me and he said, Mom, he said Valentine's Day's coming. And I want to make every kid in my class a valentine and her heart broke she thought he'll probably not even get any if he does he won't get very many because they don't even hardly know he exists but she went along with him she took him down to the craft store they got the crafts they sit down and they made beautiful individual cards for every kid in the class she took him to school that day he was so happy carrying his little box of cards when school was out, she went to pick him up. He come walking out of the building again, all by himself again. The other kids was all ganged up, laughing and talking and looking, sharing their Valentine cards. She didn't see him really carrying much of anything except his satchel. Didn't know if he had cards in it or not. But she noticed as he got in the car, there was kind of a glow on his face. He didn't look sad. He didn't look down. But he said, he said these words. Not a one, not a one. And her heart just sank and her heart broke. She thought, oh, he didn't get a one. And he took all of these beautiful Valentines to school. But then he said with that same glow and a smile on his face, he said, mom, I didn't forget a one. Not a single one I forgot. Now folks, that's not only these people and you all, but that's our Savior this morning. He loves us. He has such compassion that when he saw the crowd scattered abroad as sheep not having a shepherd, the Bible said his heart moved with compassion. Oh my, there's no one that loves you like Jesus this morning. There's no one that can strengthen you and support you and help you and guide you and get you to where you need to be other than Jesus Christ. I'm glad I know him this morning, don't you? And I'm glad that he looks down upon every last one of us this morning. And he said, I didn't forget a one, not a single one. He sees us all. He loves us all this morning. 
I don't know the order of the service, but I feel we should have you all to stand. I know they have, don't want you to leave if you don't leave because they have a video. They have further things that they need to do. And so just stand if you would with heads bowed this morning.